Singular at the half. Sponsored by Singular Wireless, the wireless company that fits you best. And welcome back to our New York studios in Singular at the half, everyone. Greg Gumbel with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. Our halftime score in East Rutherford. St. Joe's leading 33 to 27. As you take a look at the numbers, let's give our partner a pat on the back. What did he say earlier about points off turnovers being a big deal here? He certainly did. Seth called it, and that certainly has been the difference so far. And also the ability of St. Joe's, even though they're not shooting it that well, they have made three from behind the three-point line. Oklahoma State has not made any. But the points off turnovers, we're going to take a look at the pressure defense from St. Joe's. And Aaron Pass created this turnover opportunity, and Jameer Nelson finishes. Then right after that possession, Oklahoma State did a nice job, broke the pressure, and then penetration here by Tony Allen leads to an easy bucket for Joey Graham. You've got to handle the ball better and attack with good, solid dribbling to get inside against that pressure deep. You mentioned the St. Joe's defense. That means I get to talk about Tyrone Barley again. I, don't, I can't get enough of this kid. He completely changed the tone of the game. He came in about the 14-minute mark. Look at him slide all the way over to take the charge on Daniel Bobbick. That was Bobbick's second. Look at this chin-to-elbow defense on Tony Allen. He created a turnover here. It did not go into the stat book as a steal, but he's the one that made it happen. St. Joe's has been winning all of its games this year because of its defense, and Tyrone Barley, as a senior, gives them leadership gives them toughness that's why they're winning at the halftime and that's their best chance to get to san antonio all right and uh, the winner of the saint joe's oklahoma state game will play the winner of tomorrow's kansas georgia tech game earlier this evening in phoenix alabama and yukon watch yukon's a mecca for difference with this team in yukon though is they have been challenged and tested during the regular season it's gonna i just can't even envision them losing at this point all right guys tomorrow kansas will take on georgia tech with a trip to the final four on the line Earlier today, we had a chance to talk with Kansas coach Bill Self and Jayhawks forward Wayne Simeon, and we asked the coach if the team's progress under his tutelage has gone as quickly as he had planned. It was a little longer than I expected. I, I, I think when we... When we uh... We'll face off against Georgia Tech in the St. Louis Regional Final tomorrow. It tips at 2.40 Eastern here on CBS. That's followed by the Atlanta Regional Final between Xavier and Duke. And our Regional Final Sunday starts at noon Eastern with a CBS Sports Special, Glory in Black and White, the story of the 1966 NCAA champions. Then at 1.30 Eastern, Clark, Seth, and I will be back on the road to the Final Four to get you set for all the Regional Finals action. Time now for the singular one-on-one -on -one with Billy Packer Trivia Challenge. Seth, who was the first friend? Freshman to be named most outstanding player of the NCAA tournament. Got to be never nervous, Purvis, Greg, right? Uh, no, you're wrong. The answer is Utah's Aww. Ernie Farron, who earned that honor back in 44. <laughs> for a chance, you got it wrong in rehearsal, too. For a chance to win a trip to the Final Four, send a text message to 26222 or log on to slash two NCAA. Thank you for joining us here on Singular at the Half. Jim and Billy are back with the second half of Oklahoma State and St. Joe's after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular Wireless, the wireless company that fits you best. We are 20 minutes of basketball away from finding out who will run to San Antonio in the Final Four and who on this night is the boss of the hardwood in Jersey. Exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Microsoft. Courtyard by Marriott. Coca-Cola. And by the new Chevrolets. Second half about to begin here, Billy, and there are some really one-sided numbers here to look at. Very, very strange three-point field goal. St. Joe lost the mark, but look at Oklahoma State. Zero for eight from three. That's more than they want to shoot, but there's certainly a lot more than they'd want to be making. The steals also favoring heavily the Hawks. Six to one. And how about that with the dribble? Oklahoma State has gotten themselves in trouble to the tune of 16 points off of steals. 
versus none on the other side. That's right. Points off turnovers. West leading the way with 11. You mentioned the 0 for 8 from behind the arc for the Cowboys. That includes John Lucas 0 for 5. All right, so St. Joe's with the six-point lead. 20 minutes away from someone having their ticket punch for San Antonio. Who will it be? Nelson working on Bobic, who has three fouls, and he goes right under the basket, brings it back out. West lost the handle and a turnover right away on the first possession of the second half. Good quick hands by Allen. One of the things you might want to think of if you're St. Joe's, Allen, who gets very aggressive, to go ahead and see if you can't challenge him a little bit, whoever he's guarding with the dribble, see if he'll be aggressive and pick up that third foul. Here's the key right now. Can Lucas get into this game at all, Jim? He has really had problems both shooting the ball and handling it. Nelson eyeing him. Bring it out to the top scorer in that first half. Now Bobic with the three. Wow, that was from way out there. I didn't think he really had caught that ball properly. That was some release. It's very similar to what he did now against Pittsburgh on Thursday night. Bobby came right out in the second half after a dry first half and hit two big threes early. A turnover on the last trip by the Hawks. Only the third of the night and the first in 11 minutes. West. Hands in the hands of the shortest man on the floor. Lucas. Nice job by Bobby. Lucas, somebody better bring him down. Only Graham underneath. Lucas will get some confidence if people don't stop him with the dribble. Carroll is not going to take it inside quickly. And another turnover. Timeout, Phil like Martelli. My goodness, what a start. First to get Bobic with the first three of the night for the Cowboys. I, I think that maybe the next time down the floor, he comes out just to, times out just to calm his club down a little bit. They match the same number of turnovers committed in the entire first half here in the early going. Two turnovers in three possessions. What an explosive drive that was. Let's get a report now from Bonnie. Well, Jim, of the nation's best shooting team, Eddie Sun said of his Oklahoma State squad, I don't know that I've seen some of my guys shoot as poorly as they did in the first half. He said, but our biggest flaw is our inability to take care of the basketball. He said, we're not used to 10 turnovers a game, and St. Joe's capitalized on almost all of them. He said, boys, we keep doing that. We're going back to Stillwater. And it come out blazing here in the second half. A foul was on Carroll a moment ago, his first. Work it back inside the Graham, That's, and he was pushing off. That, that was an offensive foul. Graham so strong with the upper body, uses that arm sometimes, and Carroll did a wise thing. As soon as he felt the contact, he dropped back. That's the second on Joey Graham. They've got two on Graham, two on Allen, three on Bobby. No foul worries on the other side. Allen talking to Graham out there. Graham said, hey, you better go back and pick up that man in your garden. Don't talk to me. And Allen realizes it's rest. You better get there. Jones working it, working it. Tough shot. Oh, and the loose ball picked up now by McFarland. What's he going to do with it on the dribble? He's going to whip it over here to Lucas. Jumper back to the rim. Just cannot get anything to fall as Lucas. Nelson with the big lob. Caught underneath it. Took it back out to Carroll. In there. In and out. Pulled back down by McFarland. Carroll now one for seven from three. Well, that shot looked good, Jimmy. You're right on the angle with it. It was an excellent release. Didn't go. And Joe's shooting well, much poorer than they'd like to from the three-point line. Cowboys looking for their first lead since 11-10. Take it with the basket here. It's Lucas. There you go. John Lucas with the three. Will Phil Martelli get that timeout now? I think he needs to change the pace of this game. He's standing up there, but he's letting his team go. Kind of surprised me a little bit. 8-0 to start the second half. You notice that when Bryant steps out, nobody worries about him. Great backdoor cut. And Nelson finishes. Well, that's when you've got confidence in your club. It's come out very slowly. That's Nelson's first basket in about 10 minutes on the clock. That ties it at 35. He's looking like he wants to work something inside, and he does to Joey Grant. Beautiful assist. Great recognition between those two players right there, Jim. Allen, who's under control with that great power. And you know, Graham has had some hands, doesn't he, when he catches that ball. It's so powerful. Darryl, again, long. Bryant saves it, though. 
Nelson up high off the window and pulled back down by Graham with those strong hands. And he really does. He grabs that ball with two hands and it's all his. Ball and trying to get Lucas Green with some outside screens. That was a lob. That play. And he's trying to find McFarland. 37-35. You don't want to make this spectacular play at this point if you're Oklahoma State. Stay solid. Eddie Sutton immediately calls on Weatherspoon to go check in. Passing traffic, caught underneath the basket. No place to go. Where are those hands again by Graham? Lucas signals. Come on, let's move it up. Let's move it quick. Fade away, Lucas. You know, he's made two of the fadeaway jump shots in this ball game, but has not made the straight in looks. And there's the timeout called by St. Joe's. They weren't going to wait for the next dead ball, which would have automatically brought one. Jim, I thought it should have come a little earlier. They had Get the momentum back. Settle things down 12 2 to start the second half for Oak State. UConn is in the Final Four. This is the second piece of the puzzle. And interestingly, the winner of this game will not play UConn next week in the semifinals. Instead, we'll play the winner of Georgia Tech, Kansas. Comes your way tomorrow on CBS. Jim, we have seen two different philosophies here in regard to defense. St. Joe in the first half did a great job with full court pressure. You can see here Oklahoma State not wanting any part of full court pressure to go up against Nelson. They wait for him in a half court set. Even with this 12-2 Cowboy run to begin the second half, Barley is not brought in. The super sub still sits with West with his own fadeaway. And unlucky with the roll that time, McFarland has it for the Cowboys. And Graham, on up John, guys, shot. Graham, does he seem focused, Jim, or not in this second half? You know, he can not only control the boards, but he can get on an offensive spurt you wouldn't believe. West, that one's blocked by McFarland. No, they say he got a piece of the hand. Second time today, McFarland picked up a foul where he thought he had a pretty good defensive chance for the block. And that's three on McFarland. Remember when it, early in the first half when Nelson made that drive down the lane, McFarland picked up that foul. Talking about Joey Graham a moment ago, scoring at the other end. He now has a double-double tonight, 11 points, 10 rebounds. Well, he had a 36-point game against Nebraska, the most ever scored in the Ivo Arena, with the exception of the 58 Bob Curl in the way back in 1946. So that record still standing. Stephitis coming in for Carroll and Barley in for Bryant. Let's see what Barley can do. He has been the man, in my estimation, that has been the key in this tournament to change things around for St. Joe. Can he do it again? Free throws by Delonte West. Oklahoma State's hit six of its first eight in this half to take the lead. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Mountain Dew, IBM, Hellboy, and by McDonald's. the hawk and meanwhile you remember that lob pass young john lucas tried to attempt <laughs> look at his dad you know for every father and jim we've been there you get in a game like this you anguish so much and i hope that john is not looking at his father john because you can't get involved but, but his father is dying right here now it is so much easier to play the game than to watch your son play it but he was giving him some pretty good advice. Stay away from that lob pass. Get back to the dribble and shoot and get a good release on your jump shot. So it was all good advice. It's tough for a young man to have to listen. And there's the young man, and that's knocked away. Where's the dad? Great point guard at Maryland 30 years ago. And he had his own agonizing moments. Oh, boy. In postseason play. Back then, you could only get one team in from the conference, and they had that storied overtime ACC final game against NC State and there a double up and yes it's no nope, oh. I'm out oh I thought I thought he went there. out of bounds with so did I. those strong hands allowed Graham to get the timeout I'm out Oak State I team problem try reboot in 34 years as a head coach Eddie Sutton only Dean Smith more wins after 34 years on the bench. 700.
64 W's and looking for his third Final Four. 1978 Arkansas, 95 Oklahoma State, his home school. Here we go with six seconds on the shot clock. Allen with the three. Tipped up by Graham, battling for it. it alive. Nice hustle there by Jones. Nelson tough in this position. Big move and look over oh, the Cowboys up there trying to influence that shot. That was McFarland about, what would you say, a foot above the board there? He had company. Now it got the fake on Stachitis. And this will be a foul on St. Joe's. We're seeing some men step up here, Jim, in this second half. Dwayne Jones on the foul, and whether you're looking for live scores and updated brackets from each game or game centers with in-depth play-by-play, you can find it all. CBSSportsLine.com. Inbounds pass, Lucas. Bank shot, yes. Surprised Nelson by breaking to the basket that time. Got a good open look. Lucas now starting to pick up some confidence in the second half. Yeah. Is, is he ever, Billy? Seven points in the half, nine for the game. Maybe he has been watching his father. Wide open. Nelson. Big hit. And considering how they had struggled from the floor in this half before that one. You can see what Oklahoma State is now doing for Lucas. They're setting a big screen to try to break that defender so he can't go ahead and play in man-to-man. -man. Smart move by Eddie Sutton. Yeah, how big that shot was. They made only one of their first ten in this half before the three by Jameer. Lucas. A little bit of a line drive. They've got a fast break opportunity. Are they going to take it? Here comes West. Our boys get back in a hurry. Three-point lead for Oklahoma State. Seems like everything changes when Barley comes in the game, doesn't it? They seem to be much more composed. They get better shots, better looks. And obviously stronger defense. And better leadership. There's a line three by Delonte West. He just changes this game around. The defender all over Lucas right here. And that's his nickname around Hawk Hill. And West is saying to Allen, go ahead, put up the jump shot. Joey Graham and Stokitis out high with the foul. So back-to-back -back threes by St. Joe's for a six-point run. Bob it back in along with Crawford. Jim, it really is interesting in regard to three-point shooting. St. Joe's shoots 40% from three. And you have a team, Oklahoma State, that holds opponents to 30%. So something has to give. And so far, they're 5 out of 19. So Oklahoma State's got the percentage battle going. Bobbick never had a clean handle. Instead, sets up Lucas. Ooh, what a rebound. Look at that. Fighting inside with Crawford falling to the floor and a foul against St. Joe's. That's again against Dwayne Jones. That's his third. Well, when Eddie Sutton went to the bench in the first half, Things kind of got out of focus for their team. Now Crawford comes in and does a couple of solid things. Bryant's going to come in for Jones now that they, they don't get him in, in time. He raced to check in, but did not get there in time. And Graham again, using those hands to push the defender away. He got hit on the arm by Stokitis. No question. That is just not big enough or strong enough to guard him. Three on Stokitis. Sunday night's lineup tomorrow night. America's number one network. It all begins with number one news magazine, 60 Minutes, then Cold Case, and the CBS Sunday movie, Jesus. All here Sunday on CBS America's most watched network. Graham at the line for two. Best newcomer in the Big 12 this year. Jim, there's something interesting about this team. In the first 15 games of the year, they shot only 63% from the foul line. Since then, 73%. Terrific improvement, and obviously has a lot to do with the terrific run they've had. Julie Graham has tied his career high in this game with 10 rebounds. Gets the second to go. One-point lead, Oklahoma State. Lucas trying to defend. West, tough shot. All Cowboys underneath. Lucas races up. In the lane, it's round. What a feed, Lucas. Wow, and that will be a foul on Brian as well. 
Terrific job by Lucas to spot him. Here's where hustle counts, and right, you see right now Graham. As I said, the men are now coming to play. Terrific job on his part. Just too strong, too big, and can really elevate. And draws the third foul on Bryant. So Joey Graham having a huge night here for OSU. Three-point play and a four-point lead as they head to the benches. What a different team we're seeing this half. Joey Graham and John Lucas and the Cowboys. Lead at 47-43. Jim Nance with Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein, Jameer, and Delante. They huddled with the coach, came out of the huddle, and then Jameer brought the teams over, the rest of the team over, put his arms around him, and had his own word or two for the rest of the team. Well, terrific senior leadership on that young man. Up to come back to this team and has been the leader all year long. So that's not too surprising. Three Hawks with three fouls. The Titus, Jones, and Bryant. And Jones is having to sit. Barley in traffic, and Bryant fed by Barley. A little difference with McFarlane out of the game, Jim, with a little foul trouble. He would have been there for that play. Ooh, what a tough matchup right here. Elbow Nelson's. to the chin of Nelson. Yeah. Graham was trying to free himself, and a hold called on Jameer. Thursday on a new Survivor, the All-Stars think it's time for a merge, but what they get is a bizarre twist that will shake up the game, and you'll see it Thursday at 8, 7 Central. America's most watched network, Survivor back to its usual time. That's the seventh team foul, so we're in the one and one for Oklahoma State. Jim, Nelson very seldom finds a guy that he goes up against that he isn't as strong physically as, and there was the, one of the few times that that would happen to him. That's why Graham was on that line. before the shot. It's going to be fighting through the screen. Bryant set a decent screen. Gets fouled. And it's called on Graham as we look at some of his big moments in this game. Graham with a double-double. 15 points, 10 rebounds. He just picked up his third foul for the Cowboys, and that's the third team foul. This is very big, but falling in can do the job defensively, but Graham was just getting in sync on the offensive end. Nice job by Nelson, realizing the cut was not there by West. Look at Allen out high on West. I think West ought to try to take him to pick up some fouls. Allen plays so aggressively against that dribble. Nelson trying to free himself for the shot. What a beautiful tray that one was. And not, not only, Jim, a great shot there, but it was good, against good defense. Bobbick held his ground against all of that, and he still got it off. 17 for Jameer Nelson. Boy, they are really getting tight on both ends. Yep. As we approach the midway point of the second half, and St. Joe's has regained the lead. Three-point shooting, so important for this club. Eight on the shot clock, Lucas in the lane, floater, front of the rim, tipped up by McFarland. No, it was uh, Allen. And a new 35 for Oklahoma State. I think Lucas was surprised he was that wide open on the drive. He loves to survey. Now comes in, hits the shot. Did a great, great job, Jim, pulling up on that shot. Rather than going any one dribble further, he draws the charge. Smart play. Tony Allen with 12. And we have our sixth lead change. Wanting to drive. Nelson back out high. Brian will give it up quickly. To Titus, to West. Bounce pass of beauty and finished up by Brian. Just great ball handling on the interior. Bryant hanging around, takes advantage. Back and forth we go. St. Joe's 50, Oklahoma State 49. Nelson got away with a foul that time. He's got to be careful. Doesn't want to pick anything cheap. They've got to keep him in the game. Both teams' defense is excellent on the ball. And this ball is hard to shake. 
and Lucas knows it. Yep, he can't even get the offense initiated. Seven on the shot clock. Lucas now opens from the corner and hits the three. Well, you had to double team Allen the way he's been showing he can penetrate inside. Dr. Schmidley, the school president, on his feet, cheering it on. Lucas with 12 on the game, 10 coming here in the second half. What a nice movement here by St. Joe, trying to free up one of the two guards out here, Nelson or Rest. Loose ball, picked up by Allen. Over to Crawford, Lucas snaps it ahead. It's McFarlane on the run, and the Cowboys score again. And a foul on the play. No way to stop a man who's a great finisher like that. You might as well let him take the shot. Some credit to Allen, to Crawford, to Lucas, to McFarlane. Four Cowboys touched it after the steal. Now, Jim, you've got to let a man like this go ahead and take that shot. Graham coming back in. Allen going to take a little breather right here. That foul was on Barley, his second. As McFarland's moving in on a double-double. Eight points, nine rebounds. Chance to go up five. Another product out of Willow Ridge High School in Missouri City, Texas. Well, played with the likes of T.J. Ford, Daniel Ewing, Taylor of Texas. And he started this tournament with a double. 20 and 10 against Eastern Washington. He's picking right up from there. Lucas, that big three. Cowboys up by five. You know, I want to talk about the St. Joe's flap, and I'm not talking about the Hawk. I'm going to go back to the selection show when I asked you about St. Joe's being the number one seed. And you felt that Oklahoma State deserved to be a one. Absolutely. And really, if you talk about but what St. Joe's a five, you know, the five on the, on the second line. The selection so. committee later told us that the Big 12 tournament final, which Oklahoma State won, finished too late to be factored in. They ended up ranking, because this is the first year they announced it, St. Joe's was their fourth overall seed in the, in the tournament. And Oklahoma State was a five. It was almost so fine I mean, line such look, a fine line. And look at what this game is, Jim, a very fine line. Regardless of who wins this, you could say both of these teams could make, it, make their case. But everybody should have an opinion, and obviously the people of Philadelphia had theirs, and it wasn't an agreement of mine. But what's great about the NCAA tournament, and for this coach as well as any coach, you have to win it on the floor. But it's not like it, you know, they, were, they were talking about a, a, a difference here. We're talking about well, the fourth a, overall team was a and gut, the fifth. Yeah, and in fairness and the, to and the committee, it was a gut check. You know? Sure, and the Cowboys win, and the Big 12 did not have a chance to be factored in. It was too late. And here these two are dueling to the end for a ticket to San Antonio. With seven and a half to play, and the Cowboys leading by five. Nelson, beautiful move. Not enough English on that one. Comes back into the hands of McFarlane. And see, Nelson would make that steal normally. McFarlane is so strong, and Graham so strong inside, they just can hang on to it with powerful hands. Graham is on the floor with four fouls. Fourth foul coming, 7.38 mark. Here's Allen, found the seat. Oh, and West was Nelson able. gets it. Yeah, well, West kind of forced it. He's up ahead on the run, and it's down to three. Allen was still down on the floor. I thought he was hurt there. Good job, Nelson, showing the hands that he's got. Almost walking that time on Witherspoon. Probably did walk. No call. Lucas having a huge oh. second half. Not this know, time. I don't know about that shot. Here's the breakaway. It's up to West again. Lucas got a hand in there, and it's last touch by Allen. St. Joe's ball. Jim, because they've been so successful at this, St. Joe's has with Nelson throwing that ball down there. He takes the chance, even though being down by three points. Pretty good chance on his part. Oklahoma State has only one timeout remaining. We'll be right back. And the one thing that stands out on this game summary, Billy, rebounds. Look at this, doubling up the total of the Hawks, 36-18. Well, Jim, you had the Hawks coming into the game with three less rebounds than their opponents, and you had in the case of Oklahoma State, they were almost four, five better than their opponents, so an eight differential there. And it's proven out in this particular game to have one area of the game that Oklahoma State has a big advantage. Had they not turned the ball over and created those ball turnover points, 
in that first half. Oklahoma State would be in control of this game, but that's why you play, and that's why different assets that each club has has made this game so tight. OSU has committed only three turnovers in this half, after 10 in the first. Leading to all those uh, points you mentioned, Billy, off turnovers. Here's that play where they like to clear out on the weak side. No help for Witherspoon. He's got to recognize that. Barley, give up pass here. Jones, yes. Down the one. Well, what Eddie Sutton is trying to do, and I don't know how long he can keep Graham out of this ball game. Down to six minutes now, one point game. And the man that's been the difference in this second half is sitting on the bench. Under six minutes to play, and a one point lead for OSU. Lucas is handling it for a long time, looking for help, now looking for the shot. Oh, look at Allen. Oh, and he says off of Allen. Wait a minute, that ball. It looked like the two Yeah, players. I think the ball hit right off West back. Let's see this one right here. Shot goes up, Lucas gets the good look. Yeah, there's no question, that ball hit St. Joe's in the back. Right there, the ball is touched by West. Big break for St. Joe. St. Joe can take the lead here. Down five just a moment ago. West with the three. Too strong. Tipped out of bounds by McFarland. Mm. How long will Eddie Sutton go with Graham sitting on the bench? Down to 520. He's got two starters on the bench. He's going to bring Bobbitt back in, but Graham has been sitting for over two minutes. Carroll, three-point shot. Flipped around, batted around into the hands of McFarland. This game really getting tense, Jim. You can feel it. Yeah, you really can. Both of these teams realizing they are five minutes away from going to something every kid dreams of, a Final Four. Wait, crossover dribble. A lot of intensity in this building. Here's Lucas. On the arm. And he'll go to the line. That was He's Carroll on the arm. Good free throw shooter. Let's check the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. And remember, you can get complete tournament coverage. CBSSportsLine.com. Second half turnovers that cut down on them by a wide margin. The Cowboys. Lucas has really stepped up in this second half. Shooting two at 89% free throw shooter. Young man who had all kinds of problems in the first half with his assist turnover ratio and kind of surprising because on the year he was almost two and a half to one. But the defensive makeup of St. Joe's caused him all kinds of problems in the first half. Transfer from Baylor. Big 12 conference waived the transfer rule, able to play right away. Said that he loved Coach Sutton the last two years and I didn't even play for him. I didn't realize until the other day that Brandon Knight tried to recruit him to get him to come to Pitt to take his spot. But he wanted to stay in the same league. Bring in Bobbitt. Lucas will get a breather. Well, we may be seeing a little offense-defense substitution right now. Bobbitt going on Nelson. Frees up uh, Lucas. Stay out of foul trouble, get a little breather, and maybe make this team a little better defensively. He won't be down for long. Here's Nelson working on Bobbitt. Barley on the drive. Got a shot there. tipped around. Look at Nelson find the spot. Skip pass. Carroll. Three point shot. Oh, this has tied the game at 57. How about that heads up play by Nelson? He gets it in the deep corner, has the presence of mind to know where everybody is, including Carroll on the other side of Absolutely. the court. Absolutely. He really is heads up. Carroll's second three of the night. That was a sensational play. Four minutes to go. Our seventh tie of this regional final. Oh, there's good body strength by Nelson. Weatherspoon in with the jump in there, and it's rejected. I believe Eddie Sutton has got to come back with his starting team. He's got to go ahead and get Graham back in the game. Lucas is going to come back in. Down with Lucas, but Graham still sits with the four fouls. Now down for four minutes. Yeah, I think with 3.40 to go, Jim, Time for him to come back in there. They were up five when he sat. Now he's been asked to, to check in, so he'll be coming in next whistle. Jumper. There it is. Yes, it is. Jumper. Terrific job by West. Hawks 
59. Cowboys 57. Bobbitt driving on Nelson. And Jameer called for that one. Just his second. Probably not a wise foul by Nelson right there because where was Bobbitt going to go, Jim? That would have been a very difficult shot. One team is already in for the Alamo City, and that's the Connecticut Huskies with a very impressive, overwhelming performance for Alabama today. Too much for the Crimson Tide, down 24 at halftime. 36 points for Ben Gordon. Double bonus. Nothing here. This team, Oklahoma State, this year, 7-0 against teams in the top 25. And here comes Graham back into the ball game. Sat down a long time. And Lucas back in. Back the entire time Graham set, they did not make a basket from the field. Four and a half minutes. That was a calculated move by Eddie Sutton. Misses a pair. Ball goes out of bounds. Tough break for St. Joe. Big break for Oklahoma State. It'll be Oklahoma State ball when we come back. Carroll hit the tying three. They're up two now. One timeout for the Cowboys. And we talk about this tension, Billy, this St. Joe's school. Feeling like the David of the NCAA tournament. The little guy looking for respect in Oklahoma State. A program that faced a tremendous tragedy just three years ago. And trying to take the program back to the final four. Inside, it's Graham. Weaving his way out of there. And oh, yes, what a move by Joey Graham. Almost to three seconds, but he is so strong inside, surrounded by three people, and still got the shot off. You can see how important he was those five minutes he sat down, Jim. Changed the complexion of the offense for Oklahoma State. Tied at 59, inside three minutes. And heading to the line for two is Dwayne Jones. McFarlane on the foul. Just so strong. Three men surrounded him earlier, then two. Wheels around, comes back inside, and even with the shot blocker of the Atlantic 10, Jones there, he still gets it off. Well, you saw the power, and then you saw the finesse right here. That was the fourth foul on McFarlane at the other end. Jones, not a good free throw shooter. 45%. So, barely raised rim. Here's the situation, Jim, when you've got a 45% free throw shooter on the line and you're St. Joe's, you've got to be thinking about a miss here. Do everything you can to maybe get one right in the paint. Two okay. get away from Yep. Cowboys now trying to break that tie at 2.45. Lucas gets the switch. Allen lost the dribble going in, but got it back. Calls time. That's the last time out. Well, he had the arrow. It was not a good one to call, Jim. He would have gotten the ball back possession-wise anyway. Eddie Sutton's team, though, will talk it over. They'll have the ball when we come back. How large is that handicap, Billy? No timeouts for the Cowboys. Jim, I think it's very, very important. And you've got to, as a player, recognize the fact of which way the arrow goes. I know you have a lot in your mind, but it's extremely important. Graham hits the floor. He realize, uh, Allen hits the floor. He has to realize that, hey, we've got possession of this ball. Let's save that last timeout. Could be very, very important. What are you looking for right here for Oklahoma State with this possession? Well, I think that right now it's the Graham Allen show. If you're Oklahoma State, you ought to make... St. Joe have to stop one of those two and see if there's something else there. Inbounds pass, really important here because Barley is in the game. He's got good anticipation. And it's going to be Barley on Graham. Allen has only two points in this second half. He's the top scorer. Inside, pinned underneath. McFarland had it knocked away, and the Hawks have the possession with the game tied. Nice job by Jones to pin him on the baseline. Nelson had an open look for a moment. So what's interesting to watch Nelson's eyes, he sees all nine other guys on the floor when he's dribbling. He never has to concern himself about his own play. That's why he can make so many great plays. Two minutes to go. Under 10 on the shot clock. Nelson. Here's Allen with the sweep for OSU. Nelson got hit right in the thigh in that play. He's holding his thigh. It looks like he's in a little bit of pain right now. 
Lucas comes off the screen. Wow, what a shot at that time to take. It was a line drive, too, yeah, Billy. I, I don't think if you're uh, Oklahoma State, you want to come down the floor without giving Graham an opportunity to have the ball. I am out, called by Phil Martelli. St. Joe's with 131 remaining. Will inbound with the game tied and a ticket to San Antonio on the line. You see something here, Billy, that stands out? Yeah, it really does. We talked about the zero timeouts, but here a foul to give, which can be very, very helpful if you're Oklahoma State, particularly the way that Nelson handles the ball in these key situations. If he's beaten you, you can get the foul on that dribble and make him take that ball to the sideline. 25 seconds on the shot clock. And I really think that if you are Oklahoma State, when you get the ball, you have got to give Joey Graham an opportunity to touch it down inside. This game is exactly what it should have been. A number one against the number two. That was a foul, no call. No, it was a call. There was a yep. whistle outside, Billy. Let's see. This was That's West. He had a foul to give, though. Nobody will go to the line. That, that was Allen on the outside with West. New 35 second on there. And that's the 16 foul, the third on Allen. And Nelson uh, lost his dribble, almost a double dribble. I think it was a double dribble. Hit his leg, then he recovered. Dribbled again. Hurts and groans from the OSU section. 109 to go. Trying to get any edge you can as a fan right now. Good one. Shot blocked and picked up by Joey Graham. Now, I will be shocked now if Graham does not get at least a chance to touch the ball. Under a minute to play. Both teams looking very tight right now. Allen, wow. on West, no call. Kicks it way out. Lucas, Farley converges on him. Fadeaway jumper, he got it! You know what, Five West... to go, and they lead by two. West and Lucas both have been, I think, 100%, Jim, on fadeaway jumpers tonight. A tenth lead change. 61 59. Another one. Yes, it's Carroll for the lead. The hedge move. Why would you leave Carroll? You know Nelson can find him. 25 seconds. Down one. They have no timeouts. And taking too much time here is Oklahoma State. 15 Let's... seconds to go for the final four. Graham out high. He lost control. Kicks it out. Lucas is shot. Yes! Three pointer, seven seconds left. Two point lead. Here comes Nelson. He's got the ball. You know he'll take it. No timeout. They're not going to take it. Lucas nope, uh, defending, and yes, rebound to Lucas. Oklahoma State's going to the final four. Jim, everything the game should have been. Two outstanding teams. Heartbreak Hill, not Hawk Hill for St. Joe, but two great teams. Playing outstanding basketball. How about the shot Lucas hit for the winner? Well, his shot had been flat all night. And there's a man who saw a disappointment in the Final Four for Marquette last year. Lucas scores. sees it again, but I'll tell you what. They will remember this team in St. Joe for a long time. And Oklahoma State and Eddie Sutton, he takes another team to the Final Four. Lucas scores the last five of the game for the Cowboys. Well, I said get the ball to Graham. He fell and was able to recover. You surprised they didn't call the timeout here, St. Yeah, Joe's? They had it, but you know what? You've got the ball in Nelson Sands. He's the player of the year. Go ahead and take your chances. Lucas got the rebound. And Texas is going to have a band of Cowboys crossing over from the Oklahoma State border next week in San Antonio. Look at the reaction. Falling down on the Hawks bench. Oh, there's his father. This is awesome. Well, I wonder if he got some direction on that jump <laughs> shot. Here he goes to find John, <laughs> who never made it to a Final Four. Uh. What a season it's been for St. Joe's. Your, your heart just goes out to, to the Hawks and their incredible season. Carroll hits the shot for the lead right back. Again, with no timeouts, the Cowboys almost lost the ball for a moment. Got it over to Lucas for what would prove to be the winner.
Bryant couldn't even watch. So tough to be a senior when you're one and done. Triple A most valuable players of the game, Joey Graham from Oklahoma State. Although, I'll tell you, John Lucas could have been just as good a case there and Delonte West for St. Joe. Chevrolet makes contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. Judy Martelli on the left. It's Oklahoma State's heading to the Final Four and will face either Georgia Tech or Big 12 conference rival Kansas. What a thriller it was here. Oklahoma State pulls it out with the winning three with 6.9 seconds remaining. 15 seconds to go for the final four. Graham out high. He lost control, kicks it out. Lucas is shot. Yes! Three-pointer, seven seconds left. Two-point lead. Here comes Nelson. He's got the ball. You know he'll take it. No timeout. They're not going to take it. Lucas, nope, the defending, and yes, rebound to Lucas. Oklahoma State's going to the final four. Jim, everything. You can't make this stuff up. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State, winners by a score of 64-62 to qualify for a trip to San Antonio next week. Let's go back to East Rutherford, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Jim. All right, thank you, Greg. And we're here with the Cowboys. We're going to San Antonio. And I got to ask you, John Lucas, about that shot. Your team had no timeouts, and you hit the winning three. Hey, I had a horrible first half. And I told myself in the locker room that this was my half. I had to step up for my teammates. I felt like I let them down. And I said, no matter what, I'm winning this game today. When you released it, did you know you made it? Absolutely. Look at the shot, Absolutely. Baby. Eddie, the shot. you've had an opportunity to coach your son as John Lucas had to watch his son John. What's tougher, watching them or playing with them? Uh, I think it's a lot tougher watching them. When you're coaching them and they're down there, you've got some, some impact. And, you know, but when you're sitting up in the stands, that's the worst thing in the world for a parent to have to watch your son. A lot of guts keeping Graham on that bench for four or five minutes. What were you thinking there? Well, I, I wanted to keep him over there and, and try to have him for the last two or three minutes of the game because he is a valuable player to us. And I thought some of the guys that we substituted certainly filled in for him. Uh, I thought Spoon and, uh, and and Terrence Crawford both did a good job for us. You know, the last time we went to the Final Four, it was right here sure. in 95. Well, maybe we ought to have big country. Big country, there. big country, and, uh, and and Randy Rutherford are both here tonight. So That's special. Congratulations. Congratulations, Thanks. Eddie. And guys, you ready to go to Thanks San Antonio? Go. Yes, indeed. They're on their way. And let's go back to the studio and Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Jim, thank you. There is your final Oklahoma State winners by two. Oklahoma State last in the Final Four in 95. Eddie Sutton took him there. This is the third Final Four. What a great ball game. Boy, what a terrific effort by both teams. And then it was just a matter of Oklahoma State's John Lucas making a couple big shots late. I just can't picture Jameer Nelson taking off that uniform for the last time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jameer. You gave us a great ride. All right. They're about to cut down the nets down there. Meanwhile, in Phoenix, it was the UConn Huskies who cut the nets down earlier tonight. 87-71 winners. UConn makes its second trip to the Final Four. Last time they went, they came out of Phoenix in 99, and they won it all. The Connecticut Huskies and the Oklahoma State Cowboys, half of our Final Four. Tonight on CBS, Bob Barker hosts The Price is Right, Million Dollar Spectacular. And then Craig T. Nelson stars in the district. It's all here tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. A reminder, coming your way at noon Eastern tomorrow, the CBS Sports Special, Glory in Black and White, the story of the 1966 NCAA champions. Clark, Seth, and I will be back at 1.30 Eastern to guide you on the road to the Final Four leading up to the St. Louis Regional Final between Kansas and Georgia Tech. And then Xavier and Duke will square off in the Atlanta Regional Final. Half of it done, a couple more to go. There are our games, Xavier and Duke, and they're going to cut the nets down out in East Rutherford, New Jersey. What a nice uh, picture to leave you with. Thanks for joining us, everyone. For all of us here at CBS, I'm Greg Gumbel. Good night.